Hi, Phil here from Radio.co, and in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can build your very own playlists within the Radio.co platform. Now, in the last tutorial, if you were watching this as part of an ongoing series, you'll see that I showed you how to upload content to your radio station, content that could be music or it could be podcasts, jingles, ads. Now, the point of uploading those is to then build playlists because under the hood, Radio.co is a fantastic automated system, which means as soon as you turn your station on air and you've given it a few things, automatic commands like play a playlist, it'll do it even with your computer off, no power, no internet, all that. Um, but in order to make that work, you actually need to upload content and ideally build at least one playlist. So that's what I'm going to go through with you now. So as you can see on my screen here, I have got a number of uh, uh, tracks, you know, a few dozen tracks per se that I'm playing, and I'd like to put them into a show. I'd like to schedule them to play, but of course I need to build a playlist first. So to do that, head to the playlist section here on the left. And then here you'll see a number of playlists I've made already. I've got Backstage Access, Classic Wake Up Call, Legends of the Weekend. You can build as many playlists as you like. You can make each one as long as you want, as short as you want. And of course, it can contain whatever you wish. So we actually have a fantastic feature here, which I'm going to zoom in at the top, called the default playlist. It's whatever playlist you have that has the default uh, sort of a label attached to it. When you create your account, you will have one just called default. Uh, I've renamed this one as backstage access. Now, what the default playlist is, is this acts, first of all, as uh, like your auto DJ. So this empty playlist, anything that you put inside it, which again could be whatever you want and however much you wish, will automatically start playing any time your station is on air but you have nothing scheduled. Now, the purpose of that is because, well, you have a 24 hour radio station to run. And admittedly, the idea of running a 24 seven radio station and scheduling content for that amount of time sounds like a huge task. I mean, it sounds it because it is. So what the default playlist does is it helps you take a lot of that responsibility away, really. So if I just jump to my schedule very briefly, you'll see that I've got lots of shows here back to back. So I've spent a lot of time creating very specific playlists to cover every single hour of the day, but maybe I didn't want that. Maybe later on today, I'm going to delete this particular show here. So let's just say there is a huge gap here every day or every weekday between three and seven. Now, if I don't want to, I don't have to fill that time as I did previously. Instead, I can leave it blank and within that blank space, the default playlist will automatically kick in. We have a lot of stations that just leave their schedule blank 24 seven and that default playlist fills it in for them. Um, or we have sporadic shows, a breakfast show and an evening show, everything between that default playlist takes uh, takes uh, the, 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 uh, the sounds there. So um, yeah, this is just a really, really nice, really great way to yeah, speed up the ability to run a 24 seven radio station. You personally don't need to create 24 hours of content. However, you can if you want. Um, and that's all through the building individual specific playlists. So as I say, you can build as many of them as you like. And I'm going to create a brand new one here, create playlist. Uh, and I'm going to call this one uh, Phil's Rock and Roll Power Hour. There we go. Very generic, I know. Uh, I'm going to give it a specific color or an image. I'm just going to leave that there. Click Save. And it will take you to your playlist builder. So this is a very, very simple process. What you're going to do is you're going to search for the names of specific files you may want to use there. Or you can work your way down this list and select the files that you see and add them in. So your options are to add something to the start, add it to the end, or if you don't want either, take a file, move it across like so. And you'll see with every track I'm adding here, it's adding up the duration. So I know exactly how many tracks are playing and how long each track is going to play. You can see here, these five tracks equal 13 minutes, you know, almost 14 minutes there. If I was to schedule this five track playlist, that's how long it's going to play for. Now, as I say, you, you can make your, your playlist as long as you could possibly want to. So let's just add in a couple more tracks like so. There we go. Let's just drag some tracks around. There we go. And it looks, yeah, definitely looking at wise, it actually looks like it's going to be a really, really good show. So that's, you know, it can be very, very straightforward to do something just simple of putting very specific tracks in a very specific order, find them, add them over to the right hand side of the screen, click save. There we go. So I'm going to click save there. There we go. Now I could be quite happy with that if I wanted to, but there are other ways that I can build my playlist. I teased one option in the last tutorial and that is by using 
tags. Now, as I say, tags are really great for helping you organize your media, but they're also really great for allowing the software to help you with the programming of your station. Now, what I mean by that is I can take a tag such as, uh, yeah, power ballads. Let's put that in there. Let's take prog rock. Let's take speed metal. There we go. Now, what this is going to do is when the software gets to one of these tags in the playlist, it's going to pull a random track from that tag. So if there were 50 tracks tagged as power ballads, it's going to pull a random one. Now, it is random. However, it's going to ensure that every track within that tag has played once before any start playing for a second time. So even if you were relying on the same tag multiple times in a row, it is going to ensure you know there's a fair even spread of them all playing. We also have a setting called a separation rules, which is going to further ensure that there's no repetition in your music. Now, you can use tags like I've done here by sporadically mixing them in with my playlist, or I can, can, in fact, build a playlist that only contains tags like so. So you can see here, I've got three specific tags I've put in part of my playlist. So it's going to play a power ballad, prog rock, and a speed metal random tracks from those categories. Now, I can schedule that playlist for two hours, let's say. And for two hours, it's going to play a power ballad, prog rock track, speed metal. It's going to back to the top, and it's going to play them all like such. But yeah, but one thing to reiterate really is, is that there's no right or wrong way of building a show. You're going to put your show together in whichever format you want it. So if you want two pieces of music followed by a jingle, followed by an ad, followed by a link, you know, anything you want, you, you build it in whichever way you like, whether it's through the use of tags or using specific tracks. Now, there are other things you can put in your playlist. There are recordings. What recordings are, are these are live shows that you scheduled to record that when you came off air, you were granted an MP3 file of the show that was just completed. Um, I've not done any live shows on my station here, otherwise I would add them in, but this is where they're stored. So when you do a live show, as soon as you come off air, you have a recorded file, which is perfect for repeating a show. Maybe someone missed the show that you did last night. You're giving them another chance to listen to it tomorrow night, perhaps. Um, or maybe you want to download that recording and upload it somewhere on demand, perhaps, or on your website. Yeah can put it into your playlist at the very least. We also have voice tracking. Voice tracking is a fantastic way of getting your voice and getting your personality, your character, your passion across on your radio station without the need for, uh, well, going live. If you don't want to go live or you'd rather not, or you've got DJs involved that, you know, you really don't want them to go live just yet. Um, voice tracking is a great way to still get your voice out and, you know, maybe build up a bit of confidence in broadcasting. So how this works is I click on add voice track here at the top. I am going to decide the microphone I want to use. Now, foolishly, I've not plugged in uh, my Rodecaster Duo into it. So the only options I've got are the, you know, the inbuilt microphone here. Not a great shout, but for the purpose of demonstration, it's fine. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to, yeah, the default microphone here. And then I would then click the record button. And you can see what it's doing now is it's counting backwards from 10 minutes and it's recording everything that I'm saying into the microphone at the top of my laptop. Um, and yeah, I could record this for 20 seconds if I just wanted to introduce a track that's coming up next, ask people to get in touch and then talk about, uh, you know, something that's previously played. Uh, I could interview someone for 10 minutes. I could do the news. I could record a jingle. I could, you know... Um, tell an anecdote, you know, whatever it is you have. This is a recording booth that's built into the platform. Um, and uh, yeah, you know, you can use it in however way you like. It saves you using another platform to record it, you know, download it, save it, upload it here, you know, it cuts all that out. So what you do is you click stop. You can listen back to the file, make sure it sounds okay. Delete it if you're unhappy. Save it if you are by giving it a name. I'll just call this one uh, Phil uh, Test Voice. There we go. Click save. And it will then, oh, that's uh, the artist, of course, is me. There we go. And it will save it. And I can then put that uh, into my playlist. So I'm going to say you're listening, fill voice tracks, play all day, uh, gig guide, you know. It's really great. This gives off the impression you're doing a live show. I mean, a lot of radio, arguably mainstream radio, is voice tracked. There isn't necessarily something wrong with that. People do prefer live radio over a pre-recorded show. But if it's the only way you comfortably want to get your voice and most importantly, your passions across, 
then go ahead and voice track. Don't let anyone tell you anything different. Um, so they're the different ways of building playlists. It basically boils down to the simple thing of moving over anything to the right that you want to play and really constructing this show in whichever form you want it to, whether it's music, uh, voice tracks, old shows, letting the software pick them out randomly. Whatever your idea of a radio show is, build it very, very easily. The next step, of course, is, um, is scheduling it. Well, that's for another tutorial. Um, if you do want more tutorials like this, then please do check out our radio.co help center via help.radio.co. And until next time, take care and happy broadcasting. Want to take your radio station to the next level? Well, here at radio.co, we don't just specialize in launching new radio stations, but elevating existing ones too. For example, do you have an internet radio station that doesn't seem to be hitting that audience you want? Are you unsure whether the branding or the content you've created is right? Are there just too many industry buzzwords and equipment types that you can't get your head around? Allow me to offer my expertise. For just $50, you can schedule in a 50 minute consultation with me to go through every aspect of your station with the goal of refocusing and revitalizing your efforts to mold it into something that you're truly happy with. Even if you don't have a radio station or podcast yet, but you'd you know like some guidance on how to get off to a strong start, then please don't hesitate to get in touch. Don't let stress and small audience numbers get you down. Get in touch via studio at radio.co and we'll put our heads together to turn this thing around.